health. Some have good health, but they lack wealth to take care of themselves. So uh, these people, uh, their forefather, like she said, she said some they, 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 the forefather made an oath, made, had a covenant, whatever, with demonic power. And guess what? They traded their good health for money. So now they have money. But they don't have good health. Praise the Lord. But some of these things are things that they did. But now their children are suffering for it. Even the, the seventh generations. Praise the Lord. Those are the things that we shall be delivering from. And I pray God will deliver us from all this unknowing covenant. Unknowing, unknowing uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, plans of the devil that our forefather has vowed. Even on our behalf. And we don't know it. And now we are suffering from it. And I pray this day God will deliver us from all those demonic power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's open our Bible to Proverbs chapter 4. 20, 26 chapter chapter 26 verse 2 Proverbs chapter 26 verse 2 Uh-huh As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse costless shall not come. Verse 3. And the birds of the house and a road for the foes back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So basically, the demons... They will not be, they cannot possess you if there's no, like we said last week, if there's no crack, they, 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 they has to, something, it's like a bait. It's, something has to attract them to possess you. Praise the Lord. But when you are a child of God, right? Remember, the fire of God was already around you. They won't be able to touch you. But then you have to stand from, if you come from that family that has been possessed by demons, guess what? You, the light of that house, you need to stand up and pray and say enough is enough. So your fire can ignite and your fire can protect the rest of the family. But somebody needs to take the bull by the horn. So the covenant the how the more gains to, to uh, access to men is through by covenant. And in, in this note it says this, this is an agreement between two or more parties. When you have two or more parties involved I mean there has to be two or more parties involved to, for a covenant to be legit. It could be by only or could be demonic. So covenant could be only and it could be demonic. And any violation will always attract some of this pen penalty. They said that in this book it says um, types of covenant and what are the types of covenant. But let's talk about the only covenant and demonic covenant. What are the only covenant? What are the things that you say it's holy? Covenant that we you know we normally make that we could say it's categorized under being holy covenant anybody what are they what 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 can we categorize under the holy covenant remember i said covenant it's it has to it's it's it takes two to tango. It takes two people to be in an agreement for a covenant to be called a covenant, right? So, under that covenant, we have two types. Could be only, that covenant could be only, and that covenant could be demonic. Now, sub adding only covenant, what are the things that we can easily categorize that could be considered holy covenant? Pastor Sophie. Yeah, one is a uh the covenant that we enter in with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. And another one is marriage through uh, 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 a, a covenant, covenant of marriage Amen. 
through holy matrimony. Holy matrimony. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the covenant could, could salvation be a covenant? Could our salvation be a covenant, right? Because it, 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 when you when you give your life to Christ, you you said God. I am not going back. You are making a covenant. The Holy Spirit is there with you when you are making that covenant. God, the host of heavens, are there when you are making a covenant. No wonder when they said, if you, when they call for altar calls, they said, make this pronunciation. Because you are making, you are, you are making this pronunciation publicly. So everybody could hear you. And that could be a covenant that you have. It's holy. And you are, and that thing somehow will be like reminding you that, okay, remember you already made a covenant with God that I'm going to walk the walk of faith. I'm going to stay away from sin. I'm going to do the right thing with God. I'm going to do things that God has ordained for me to do so that I'll be able to fulfill my, 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 my purpose in life. Praise the Lord. So that our salvation could be what? Could be considered as holy covenant. Then in the matrimony, they call it holy matrimony. No wonder they call it holy matrimony. Most churches, they call it, well, before you get married, they said, we are doing the holy matrimony service. We are doing holy matrimony. It is called holy matrimony. Why? Because you, the man and the woman, coming together in agreement and that is even if you don't do it in church you go to courthouse they will still require one person to be there to witness that holy matrimony because until then if it's just you two the husband and the wife to be doing it together it's not a covenant because there's no other party involving you to witness that covenant praise the lord and when you do such and that is why even at courthouse they will ask you the the, the judge will say you know what uh, I'm, I'm i'm gonna do this you need somebody a witness from the woman and a witness from the men so that way it could be called a covenant and but why is it so easy for people to just break this covenant it's holy though the body can easily say you know what i don't want to do it anymore i just want to break it i am done with you i am falling out of this love i fell in love with you but i don't want to fall in i'm falling out of this love now but why is it so easy for people to just decide and say you know what I've, i used to fall in love with you now i'm falling out of the love and they just make it so easy to work out why because the reason why I'm, what i think is most times some people just don't don't they don't value that covenant they just made so when you make a holy covenant in the presence of god you take it so serious that you know what let that holy spirit be the, the conscience that will be even when you want to do evil to that party the co just because you had made that covenant and that thing will be reminding you remember you had a vow remember you have you made a covenant that you will not do this praise the lord and that is why we should take every covenant that we make being holy we need to take it very serious being a child of god when you make a covenant you make a commitment you vow that this i will not do this i will do this so help me god when you are doing the only matrimony no wonder they say after you say whatever in death do us part whatever you know all those beautiful you know in in sickness in this and and can anybody remind me so they will not say <laughs> uncle <laughs> uncle wants to help me you know just good stuff they always say during only matrimony okay for richer for poor sick sick is <laughs> sickness in health in what and there's some other things that they will say praise the lord but they will after at the end of it all they will now say so help me god and the reason why they say so help me god is to seal the covenant praise the lord so the hosts of heaven are waiting for so help me god and i'm going to tell you one thing i was when i was researching this and i noticed that those people that don't remember to say so help me god after that marriage 
No wonder they don't last. Some call it drive through marriage. They go to Las Vegas, they do the drive through. There was no so help me God. And as a matter of fact, when you doing it, even at a court, if they don't, most of the people, they don't say don't so help me God because nothing is helping them. There's nothing that's sealing that, that thing to make it holy. And no wonder the husband is cheating. No wonder the wife is cheating. No wonder the children are chaotic. No wonder they don't listen to the parents. No wonder everything that generates that comes out of that thing it doesn't come it doesn't it doesn't appear normal it appeared chaotic because the host of heaven is not there was not there to stamp it to embrace them to say okay oh, you didn't invite him in the first place why will he now come because you refuse to invite the holy spirit to come to the affair of your home Praise the Lord. The covenants that we make that is holy, the, in the holy matrimony, let's take it so serious. For those of us that's married, please, there is a day that you make that vow. Remember that vow that says, God, so help me God. He will help you when the, the person is sick. He will help you when they are not in the rightful mind. They, 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 they are rightful, they, in their rightful mind. He will help you when there is no money. It's not you are not in that relationship because of money. If the, there is no money, you know, say, okay, honey, uh, you know, when you used to, when everything used to be rosy, 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 rosy. We used to, hey, you know, but right now I, I have more money than you do. I'm going to keep my money into my pocket. It's not two shall become one. And now he's only one. You on your home, bro. You on your own, sister. Then you start saying all that stuff. Then because the marriage is not together. It's not only anymore. Then the husband started feeling um, sort of kind of on ease. And, and, and there be a tension in the home. And then, then, then the children started. And when the husband started feeling tensed. And, 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 and the oil of that tension flowed down to the wife and the wife started feeling horrible and the children they don't now they are confused they don't know which way to go should i support my mom should i support my dad and guess what the spirit of manipulation now kick into the life of the children now they will be tossing they will tell mama something different and now they will go to daddy this is what my mama did and the daddy will not say oh really keep monitoring me. I'm, you know i'm watching okay and the child, so they, 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 then the, the devil started having a little display game in that home the dad is so moody the mom doesn't want is the dad home to the, when he gets home coming and the and the girl and the little baby now will go to the bathroom dad my mom is in my mom's not in the house don't come yet so please and the devil started playing around this home and guess what it is not then they, they started living and on evil, the, 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 the demon now is now sitting down in the affair of that home, and now he's the king of that home and using that manipulative spirit to break that home. And that covenant that they were they had before, now he has nowhere to be found. Praise the Lord. So, for those of us that are still not married yet, let's take all this thing very, very serious. The day you say, I do make sure you welcome so help me god into that relationship say it make it a pronoun make, make, make it a big pronunciation pronounce it confess it so that way the holy spirit will know okay this home they are inviting me to this marriage they are inviting me to this relationship they are inviting me to this newly home they are putting together if you don't say that you are not inviting them the demon is probably happy and say okay now they didn't invite god they didn't say so help me god they didn't invite holy spirit now i must well invite myself if you don't invite me i'm already invited <laughs> praise the lord and that that day of that um uh, uh, um uh, what's it called the day of the um, of um honeymoon and that's when confusion started happening uh, you, you you didn't do this you didn't do this and i'm tired i'm this and they started mocking and started whining and guess what the devil started gaining access to that home i pray every, i pray that devil will not gain access to our family in the name of jesus christ number two
in terms of um, uh, only matrimony, when we go to wed at the courthouse, that is not only matrimony. That is a legal marriage that is recognized by God as a wedding, as a marriage. But because you don't even, the person that is wedding you, maybe he's already divorced himself. Maybe he's serving the devil. But because of his official capacity, he is there and he's the one that is joining you together. And many people rely on that and say, oh, that's enough. Until you actually come to church in the presence to Mount Zion, in the presence of the living God, and with the, you know, with the covenant of the blood of God present and everything, that is what brings about the only covenant in that marriage. We as a church, we we encourage go to the courthouse, do what you need to do for the legal papers. But we also say, come to church, is either we bless the marriage or something, but don't just leave it at that point. Otherwise, you have not fully brought God into that union. God bless you. Thank you, Daddy, for that clarification. So we, we get to know that until you bring God, like I said, to that marriage, it's not only matrimony. Praise the Lord. So let's try as much as possible for some of us that are still single, some of us that we are still looking into be married. So those are the things we need to, you know, take into consideration. And as a matter of fact, Daddy, when all these people married you, like pastor said, you don't know the spirits that they are transferring over you. Praise the Lord. Some of them had demonic. And that is why, because they carry, a de- some of them, I'm, I'm very sorry to say this. Some of these people that just married you out there in this drive through I'm going to Vegas, I want to go get married. The spirits that they carry goes with you. No wonder that relationship, after you left that place, it will only take the grace of God. If you don't bring that marriage to be holy in the presence of God in Mount Zion, there's a possibility for you to divorce. No wonder this divorce rate in this country is so skyrocket, like no, no man's business. You married today, tomorrow, I am tired of you already. I don't, somebody will even say, I'd rather be your friend than to be your wife. I'd rather be your friend than to be your husband. Praise the Lord. Why? They want to live in the same house committing sin and but they don't want to do what is right before God it's so demonic and the devil is using that and he said if I can attack home, attack family and you are attacking the whole the whole universe because family is what bring about uh, 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 um, who we are today if, uh, if, if, if it's not family, there'll be no, we cannot produce, right? We cannot multiply, right? So the devil is so cunning, he's so powerless. I call him a stupid devil. He, he's, so, he's, so, he's, so, he's so useless in his head. And what he's trying to do now is attacking different homes, bringing different ideas, even to the young men that, hey, honey, we just need to have baby. We don't need to get married. I can just, we can just continue like this and nobody knows. It's okay. We could, I could be, and, I, and he's using it. You know, I don't want to mess up with my SSI. We just go and just continue. And then I don't want to mess with my, um, my, my um, food stamp. We just continue to have babies. And these things are happening and it's happening and in the presence of God. And people still do, and they are the same people. They are, they are leaders in churches. Because of the whatever they are receiving from the government, they refuse to bring that. And that covenant is so important. Because you are depriving yourself from the blessing of marriage. You are depriving, and guess what? If you look at that home, like we are, de- we are dealing with deliverance. And guess what happened? Because you did not do it, the mother didn't do it. 
the, the, the second mother, the grandmother didn't do it. Now the children that's come from that, they didn't do it. Why? Because and it started growing, growing, growing. And none of that family is ready to take hold of that covenant that's holy before God. They just want to have baby mama and baby daddy and that's it. Just have children and that's it. They don't want to do what is right before God. I pray after this message that God Almighty will open our eyes to see how powerful, how serious and he will deliver us from every plans of the devil even in our homes in our relationships in the name of jesus christ we need to open our eyes and start teaching them if i make a mistake the mistake i made i don't want my children to go through it we can still make it right brother we can still make it right sister just the fact that we already made that mistake while well, now i'm seeing my children going through the same thing my other child she doesn't want to get married my second one she just want to have baby the other one said, you know what, uh -huh, mom, mom, I don't want to have anything to do with a woman. Praise the Lord. It's because I made, I, I, I made a wrong choice. Now it's affecting that. So we need to break out of that and let God come in and call them to, 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 to see what is really happening in that home. Otherwise, it's going to be so chaotic. And it's even in Fresno, I was looking at, I realized, I noticed that almost 60 percent of people that's here where i used to work before we at downtown we, 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 i think we were about 200 and something employees so one day we were all talking in my department i was the only person that's married out of 200 and people who are just all of us who are you know we, we usually have a departmental meetings you know who are just talking somehow I was, you're not married no i'm not and i said she said i've been married um six times the other one said i've been married two times the other one said i don't even want to get married but i have i have uh, six baby daddies and, and it was just it was just it was just everywhere and then i i got home i was trying to put the puzzles together why if you are sitting down looking for a perfect man, you sit down looking for perfect man, you never get one because you have to make yourself perfect first. Fix yourself first, and the person that's already fixed will now meet you. Be, we're already ready to go. Praise the Lord. But because we all want, we want to marry somebody that's that, that's that's rich, and I don't have money. I want to marry a doctor, and guess what? I'm just barely a janitor. I am not even a CNA. Come on now. And you want to marry a rich person that's doing that's driving escalade, and guess what? I don't even have a man enough money to buy me a bicycle. It does not add up. And these are the things that we go through, and the demons now coming in. He will now come in like a flood and be in charge of our mind, of our head, of our hearts, and start manipulating all this reason why you should not do it the right thing in the first place. I pray that God will deliver us from that in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is the only matrimony. For some of us that just joined, we are talking about how the de demons gain assets. We're doing deliverance. Our topic is about deliverance, and our memory verse, it's on um, um, uh, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. It says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be holiness, there shall be deliverance, and, 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 and we shall possess our possession. So, praise the Lord. So, we, those, that's, that's what we, 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 we talked about so far, and we talked about how demons gain access to, to us. And we said, demons gain access to us. You know through sin even through covenant and we have two types of covenant holy covenant and demonic covenant so um and i asked earlier what could be considered as being holy covenant we have a holy matrimony and our salvation could be holy covenant praise the lord so let's memorize that memory verse for next week god bless you so now dealing with a demonic covenant are we all together so far any clarification on only 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 covenant can anything else be added to that category we have 
the covenant that we made, we made with our God, the day you give your life to Christ, our salvation, it's a covenant. And that is why we, I said earlier, I said that's why pastors, every time you give your life to Christ, they want you to publicly make that confession. Just don't say, I say it in my heart. No. Say it loud. Say it loud that I am a child of God. Now I give my life to Christ. Just don't be those people that say it. They say, okay, I'm just going to say it in my heart. Don't worry, God sees my heart. It's okay, but until, you know, until there's a witness. Praise the Lord. It's not a covenant. So we, we, we said our salvation, then we said only, only, only matrimony, only covenant. Praise the Lord. Can anything else? Any addition? Amen. we continue to, 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 to do what is right, even we empower us in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want to take too much of our time. I have five more minutes. Then I think we're going to do the demonic one next week. So we deal with that the, the demonic uh, covenant next week. To paraphrase that, uh, Daddy, you want to say something? Okay. To, to really introduce, introduce us to that demonic uh, um, um, covenant, I'm just going to say something a little bit about it. It's, 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 it's demonic when you see the same thing that you are suffering in the life, manifesting in the life of your children. It's demonic. It's not normal. The same, some people will say it's generational curses. Some people will say, mm, it's um, in, in, in science, and in, in, in we call it uh, uh, genetic. You have my mom, is, it, is, she's diabetic, so definitely there's, there's diabetic in my bloodline, so there's possibility for me to be diabetic. Praise the Lord, it's demonic. It's not normal. Can you be delivered from me? Oh, yes, of course. Just because my mom was diagnosed with diabetic doesn't mean I have to carry that. Why? Because I have the blood of Christ inside of me. Those are the things we shall be dealing with next week. Those generic things that is, they think is normal. It is not normal. God will deliver us from these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Some people will say, well, okay, because there's a cancer in my family, because when you go to the hospital, they will ask you, do you have history of this? Do you have history of this? You start giving them this history, 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 because you still be, led, be thinking in your head that you belong to that bloodline. No, as a child of God, you need to be, you need to be completely delivered from that bloodline. Praise the Lord, pa uh, uncle. Oh, pastor in making in the name of Jesus Christ. The oil of that pastorate will flow over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will walk in the purpose and the land of the living in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heaven will open your eyes to see so that you will fulfill the calling of God upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. I saw the oil on your head. 
Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. Wow. Very deep. Any, can any person, anybody else can say something about that? It's demonic. But those are the things, you know, we shall be dealing with next week. In family, you know, nobody settles down having, and it's, you know, they're all druggy. It's not normal. It's demonic. You know, just because everybody is smoking weed around me, I have to smoke it weed. It's good for my back pain. It's demonic. It's not normal. It's not normal. It is not. You depend so much on it. Then alcohol, all my friends, everybody, yeah, they, you know, we just wake up in the morning, just take a little zip. It's all right. It's demonic. Those are not normal. And those are the things she'll be discussing about, discussing next week. Mama, you want to say something before we round up? So things that grandma suffered that is affecting you, that now you are seeing it manifesting in their lives. We need to break, break it. So after you bring them, you'll be able to pray for them and we break all this strong word of the enemy. Pastor. Yeah. Mommy Kimi just talked about things that you may feel that they are normal. Um, and we get used to them and we become comfortable with them. When pastor was preaching yesterday and he talked about Lazarus mm. coming out of the tomb and the Holy Spirit revealed this quickly unto me. But sometimes, uh, see when Lazarus was resurrected, Jesus called him out of the tomb. He came out, he was alive. He was not dead. He came out alive walking. But he call, Jesus calls us, we come out of sin. But he was still bound with the grave clothes. So we sometimes we get saved, we come alive in Christ, but there's some st- still the cloth that has been wrapped around us through our ancestral commitment to the demonic affairs. So, and we get used to, normal, to, to it as normal. And Jesus looked at him and said, unwrap him. Take this grave cloth from him. So that he, he is not associated again with the grave. But I don't think these people could see the difference between him having those clothes on and not having those clothes on. And so we Things that we may think that is normal to us, that we have gotten used to it, it has been happening for generations, and we get used to it. We, yes, we are born again, and it, I, I'm born again, and I know it's not going to happen to me because I belong to Jesus Christ. The Bible says Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. So we may say we are born again, this will not happen to me, but until we get ourselves out of these grave clothes, we will still walk in them. Wow. 
praise. Praise the Lord. Uh, deliverance um, is, uh, like we say, it's preached. So each time we hear it, God is delivering us from one thing or the other, even before, without even us knowing it. We were talking about covenants, holy covenants. You know, God will always have covenant with his people, like the same covenant he had with Noah, which is the covenant of exemption. God will add covenant with Abraham, which was the covenant of circumcision. That circumcision was meant to, which is synonymous to our today's salvation. That when we become saved, we are automatically, you know, into covenant with him. We have the covenant of peace that he also had uh, in, in, in the book of Joshua. You know, so we have this holy covenant. We talked about the covenant of matrimony that two shall become one, which is a seal. And God, the Holy Spirit, is the seal of that covenant. And that is what makes the difference. In all this covenant, God is the center point of the covenant. And, um, but we have our own part to play. Our own part. You know, when we talk about salvation, uh, free it is. Salvation is free. But we still have our own part to say, yes, I confess him as my Lord and Savior. If you don't do that, you have not fully established that covenant. You know? So we need to understand this holy and um, other covenants that could have happened, like we just spoke about um, Lazarus right now which is going to be discussed fully, you know. But one principle I want us to get from that is this. After Jesus brought him out of the grave alive, which to many, to us, is like we were dead in our sins and now we have been made alive in Christ Jesus, which is salvation. But it was still bound with the grave clothes. And that is how many are still walking around. But one thing is, Jesus did not go to remove the clothes himself. Jesus did not tell him, remove the clothes. He told people, remove it. Meaning your deliverance is in the hand of somebody. So, until God uses that person, that's why we must be sensitive who we are, where we worship, who is our spiritual leader. Because your deliverance is in somebody's hand. And I pray that every such person under the influence of our voice will be fully delivered even here in this ministry in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you Lord this morning. We give you praise. Thank you for your word that has gone forth. Thank you for the holy covenants of God in the month of July you spoke to us concerning our covenant work for grace and for favor Lord thank you for grace, thank you for favor thank you for restoration thank you for peace thank you for you know exemptions from evil and from harm and from death we return all glory unto you in the name of Jesus Lord as we go further into this study we ask O oh lord that every every demonic covenant every demonic uh, old over our lives seen and unseen shall be broken destroyed even during the course of these teachings in the name of jesus you said god sent his word his word healed and his word delivered we shall be fully delivered of everything that the enemy has owed over us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. 
we commit the service ahead of us into your mighty hand as we go into a session of worship that your presence fill this place it is our covenant day of total restoration lord you will fully restore and you fully recover everything that appertains to us concerning life and godliness thank you everlasting king receive all the praise even this day for in jesus mighty name we are praying amen